computer. Okay. All right. So here today we are going to learn how to use Simulink model to generate ROS nodes. And with me, the, um, Sarah is joining. Um, and if um, we will have a questions, she might ask questions. So it's, it might be an interactive sessions. So what we will do first is that we have MATLAB and in MATLAB, I type Simulink and then I have a Simulink, a new window open where I will create a blank node or blank model. So the goal here is to uh, create a Simulink model that will let you generate a ROS node that you can run uh, standalone. So for that, first uh, we will create uh, we will create a simple uh, sine wave uh, velocity profile, uh, which is um, easiest to understand. So uh, let's create a sine wave, okay? So in this case, sine wave is, will act as an input source for the time series data. And I will set the amplitude to 10 um, bias to five and Frequency, let's set the frequency as one and sample time as zero, okay? And after that, now this is my acting as a source. Now I will create a blank message, okay? Now I have a blank message. So this is this is the uh, fundamental component uh, for this Simulink model to generate a ROS node. And then I will create, uh, first let's select the message types. So in this case, uh, since I have only um, one signal, so I will just create a simple STD messages uh, float 64. All right, so I have this. And then after that, I will create a um, bus assignment, okay? So remember that, that this um, blank messages will produce a bus. Basically, this will tell you the structure of the bus or any ROS messages in the form of the bus as defined in the Simulink. Now, this has a type std messages float 64. So here you will see as a data component. But if I change it to a little bit more complex message, like say geometry messages twist, apply. And then uh, you will see that it has the all the components that is that goes under the definition under the um, under the uh, type geometry messages twist. So let's say here I will do the linear x. Okay, and this is the dummy variable signal one that I will remove, and then I will have a two components here. So okay, now here I will set this sine wave to the um, to the linear x. So now let's uh, just set a constant uh, in the angular z. So I will just type constant and then uh, one is okay. And then I put it here. Okay, so now this, I have the bus, all right. Now I will create a ROS publisher, publish. So we are going to choose the ROS publish. So. And then, you, 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 by the way, here you can, when you will double click anywhere on the workspace, you will see a search and then you can type the name of the block and then you can select, uh, that will get auto populated. Uh, you can also go to the library browser to select the same component, same um, blocks. So here in the ROS toolbox, then I'm using ROS one, so just ROS, and then you can just drag and drop something like this, or you can also right click and then add block to the model since the name of the model is yet untitled. Okay, let me save this model. So let me save this model as um, example ROS, okay. Now I will connect this to this publisher. So this is a publisher block. I will connect it and then I want the topic to be say sign. Uh, okay. And since this type is a geometry master's twist, I also need to change here the type to match the type. Okay. Now I have this setup ready. Um, 
All right. So, and one more thing here, I always recommend to choose the relative name is a relative topic name and not starting with slash so that when you will be creating a launch file corresponding to this ROS node that will be generated, then you can have a multiple instances without renaming the overall topic. Now I need to set up a model configuration. So for that, I will go to the modeling, then, uh, then model settings. And I want stop time to be infinity because I want this node to keep on running forever. And then the type should be fixed step. And I usually like to set the solver as an auto. And then I want the step size, basically the publish rate to be 0 0.05 as in one. So the publish rate will be 20 Hertz. And then go to the hardware implementation and then select ROS. All right. And then everything you can leave it um, as it is. Maybe if you want, you can um, have a target hardware resources. Like say, for example, you can set your name uh, email ID. And I always recommend that in the build options, make sure that where is your ROS installed and where is your workshop installed. So in this case, um, in my case, the workshop is a catpickle underscore WS and it's in the home directory. So that's why there is a tilde sign. And build action, I will choose as a build and load, not build and run. So build and run you will do, then it will also launch the ROS node. We don't want to do it right now. We want to launch the ROS node uh, at a later point, okay? So this is, uh, so now we have the uh, settings done uh, in the model configuration parameter. Let's select apply and then, okay. After that, we are now ready to uh, generate a ROS node, but you can also first check if everything is fine or not by just playing it. So for that, first we will need uh, to run ROS code in the terminal. So first we run the ROS code. So now we will have a ROS master up. Now let's play it. So if everything is fine, then it build will be successful. And then the simulations will start. So you can see here by clicking the uh, this wire, wire, you can see that some data is coming from this node, okay? And then you can stop it here. Alternatively, if you like, then you can also add an scope, uh, scope to check if the data is being published. So I add it, uh, let's say, um, so let's say add it here, okay, and then play it. So you can see that since this bus has a six signals, so you will see one of them is a constant and one of them is one and the rest of them is zero, which we did not assign. So this is how it will look like. Now, we stop it and then uh, now we are ready to generate the ROS node. And in order to generate the ROS node, you must have a ROS core running in the terminal. So let's start. And then here I go to the ROS, then build and load, and then I click it. And then you will see in the status bar that it's building. If everything is fine, then it will start generating ROS node. And then also compile and copy the, copy the generated ROS node to your Catkin workspace. So it looks like that we have some issue. Okay, so since we are using a sine wave, so we need to select the continuous, support a continuous time. You can just select here fix, and then it will fix it. And then we can try again. So it's going to take a couple of while, and I hope that this time uh, no error comes. So. It has, uh, so this simulink has generated a ROS node and now it's compiling the Catkin workspace. Depending on how many other packages are already uh, already existing in your Catkin workspace, this uh, process might take a few minutes and I have uh, so many other packages, so it's going to take a little bit while. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so if we do this build and load in this Catkin uh, workspace, can we then like copy and paste that, uh, the co compiled code for that in a different computer's Catkin workspace? Yes, uh, so yeah, uh, you can do that. And most of the generated ROS, ROS node that we have been using uh, earlier uh, do not regenerate the code. 
we generate the code and it is uh, copied it to a file and then we commit it as a git repository that anyone else can check out and so okay. here um now it has been generated and since my location was a cat cat w underscore, underscore ws in the home directory so let me show you uh this thing so let's look at here a source directory so, so you can see that example underscore ROS was generated. Now, uh, this is reusable. So you can go ahead and then do something like git in it. And then you can add your uh, git remote and then you can come into a git repository and then somebody else can check out and use it as a ROS node as if it was just a standalone, nothing uh to do with simulink or matlab at that point then and then you can also share with anybody but uh definitely since this is a generated ros node you can also select check the content of the folder these are all generated files so it's not recommended that you go there and manually make any changes okay so this uh this block has only publishers now we can also have some subscribers here so let's modify this and then have a subscriber so i create a subscribe block okay so now i have a subscribe is new basically use new is a flag that will tell you that if a topic was received on this topic so let's change it okay uh, i will change it to angular g uh, so now you understand what uh, what's happening here and make it a type as as data uh, std messages load 64 okay so this is the type i have and whenever a new message will be received in angular z then this flag will be set to true in in this tutorial we don't need to use that but at many times it is useful when you want to check whether the message was actually received or, or your model is using an actually old message so now i have this okay now i want to remove this constant and then bus selector okay and then connect it to the bus selector and then double click uh, so you can also press ctrl d to update because at this point i want i'm expecting that this should be updated to show only data because here my type is std messages for 64 so you can press ctrl d to update your model so I press Control D and it compiled, and it will give you an error that something was uh, disconnected or unconnected. So that's fine because we are not yet ready. Then you double click again, and now you see data. You select it and remove the dummy signals. Now press OK. So now I have this, and then I'm going to connect it to the Angular Z. Okay. So what does it mean here? Is that now this Angular Z will come from another topic? Okay. So here, uh, let's see my ROS node uh, STD, sorry, ROS core is running. And let's play this first to, before trying to create a um, signal, uh, sorry, before trying to create a ROS node. So let's run it, okay? And by default, you will see that here it will come as zero because nothing is being sent out. Now let's send a ROS message on that topic using command line. The ROS topic pub, um, ROS topic pub dash r, say 20 hertz, say angular. Um, angular z data, okay. And let's say I'm gonna send three. So I press enter and now it's publishing. So now you can see that here the three is coming because the uh, moment uh, you start sending data on this topic, it automatically fe starts fetching that. And so when you click this scope, you will see that this uh, cyan color value is three uh, uh, closer to five, means it, it is three. If you change it, like say, for example, I terminate it and then change it to six, okay? Then you should start seeing six, yeah. It was instant. So now let's stop this. And now let's try to regenerate it, regenerate the, the node. And it will, at that point, then it will just uh, update this folder. So build and load.
And then it's going to take a couple of minutes and then we will have a updated uh, ROS node ready. I have another question. Yes. Um, so you said to not include the slash so that in the launch file you can um, like change the name without. Uh... Yes. So um, the slash, when you include the slash, then the, then the scope of the topic becomes global and not relative. But you, if you don't include the slash, uh, then the scope of the topic is local relative to the group tag in the launch file under which it is defined so i i can demonstrate that as well okay i see what you mean uh -huh. yeah so uh now i have my ross node generated let's go to create a launch file and i don't want to mess with this package that was generated okay so just leave it like that i'm going to work it uh, work uh, to create a launch file for this node in another package okay so let's terminate this control c uh, let me kill my ros no, ros core as well and i have another package called as transfer package and I have that i can just navigate by typing ros cd and name of the package and then i want to create a launch okay here i have a launch file now I will, so you can create this, uh, if you have uh, gone through the roster, basic ROS tutorial, then you know how to create a catkin package. So I'm not going to detail of creating a new catkin package from scratch. So just assume that you have a valid catkin package and inside that there is a launch file. I'm just going to create a new file. So let's see, uh, say it example underscore ROS dot launch. Okay. And launch so this is my launch okay now what happens here i create a group and as equal to say first okay and i'm going to create two groups so that i can have a two instances of the same node okay and then node name equal to example one and type equal to example underscore ross underscore node so here is also important to understand that this example underscore ross underscore node comes from this naming that name of the package will be this and the node that is generated associated with this package will be example underscore ross underscore node so the underscore node is a convention that matlab simulink has been following to generate a standard and ross node okay and then pkg equal to example underscore ross okay so i hope this is this much then i'm going to just copy these three lines paste it uh, maybe one more line okay and then just name it second okay so what it will do is that it will create two instances of the same node uh, because they are wrapped under the uh, two different groups and you will see that how this uh, not uh, giving the slash in front of the topic name will help in creating a two instances okay so um, let's try this so let's run this launch file so ross launch then transfer package because that's how I, we run it, the name of the package and then name of the launch file. Okay. If the my launch file syntax is correct, then it will run certainly successfully. Okay, so it created. Now let's analyze what happened. Okay, so first look, look at the statistics here, like what was, the, what was uh, printed on the screen that it created the two nodes, example one dash two and example one dash three. Now let's look at by the typing ROS node list. So now you can see that first slash first slash example one and slash second slash example one. So since uh, let's go back again here, ROS CD, and then look at the content while it is running. So here what happened is that I gave a name here in example one, but it appended the group name. Uh, as a namespace basically to so distinguish the name 
if you are not adding a group, then it will make a conflict and it will say that the node name exists and we can show it uh, in a while. Now you can also check the ROS topic list to see the topics. Okay, so now you can see that the topic is slash first slash angular z and slash first slash sine wave. And what was here? Only angular z and sine wave. So when you define like that, then it will add the group name, uh, well, basically prepend the group name to create a new topics for each of the instances. Okay, so that's how you're going to create a multiple instances if you want to keep them separate. Uh, to do some other class. So uh, conceptually, you can understand that, let's say you are going to write a Simulink node that is representation of a vehicle dynamics, and you want to create a 10 vehicles, then this way it's actually much more easier to define that way by first uh, defining the topic name as a relative or topic name, and then write your launch file like this, okay? Now let's uh, terminate it and then let's make some changes. So I delete the group name and group. Okay. And then just keep it like that. So what will happen here is that your node, two nodes have the same name. Now let's see what happens. I save it and then run it. It will throw an error or give you something. So what, will, what did it tell you that? Please check all the node name attribute to make sure that they are unique. Okay, let's make it then unique. All right, so now they're unique. Now let's run it. So it will run fine now. Okay, what changes have occurred? Let's see the ROS node list first. So the name are different because we named it different. What about the topic? See, the topics are not two, uh, there are not no. Uh, two copies of the topic. There are only one topic, and both are being com uh, both are coming from the uh, like the two instances of the same node. So basically, two node, two different person here is sending messages, and you can do a check by typing ROS topic echo uh, sorry info, and then the Angular Z slash Angular Z say for example, and then you will see that there are two subscribers, and then similarly you will see that you have two publishers. So this is um, bad, right? Because then you, are, you have the same topic being published or subscribed by the same node, which may or may not we want, especially if we are creating a play tools of the vehicle or a swarm of the robots uh, by, uh, by way of uh, creating a Simulink model, then this, this way of the writing launch file may not be desirable, okay? So let's undo this. And now we are back to uh, this uh, better working positions. Last thing I want to show is, let's terminate it. And then let's make it absolute, like a global topic names. And let's leave one of them as a relative so that you will see the um, difference right away. And since we made a changes, we also need to regenerate the uh, regenerate the uh, ROS node. So we start ROS code and then click build and load. All right, and so we will see that uh, we will see updated node in a minute. Okay, so my node has been updated. Now let's rerun the launch file. So, okay, we run it. We have a two different nodes. And now let's to, uh, look at the ROS node list. So yeah, everything is good. We have two nodes with a different names. And now our ROS topic list. 
now you can see that we have only one angular z but slash first slash sine wave and slash second slash sine wave so now you can see that clearly the difference is that we have have two instances of the sine wave topic but only one slash angular z and this is because we chose to write like this as a slash angular z so it refused to inherit the name space of the group that it was part of okay now this is not the end of the life we can if somebody gives us a ross node like this we can still make it work we will have to just rename it so how are we going to do that let's control c this first and then here i'm going to do it like remap from slash angle angular z to say slash first slash angular z okay copy this and the second i'm just going to write second okay now this is done let's rerun again okay now so let's see the ross topic list okay looks like it did not work out and did i um did i re rename it correct okay i need to rename it uh did i rename it correctly um let me copy this the name properly or may it may not work so let's see okay I hope this works out this time. And let's see, control C. It did not work out. So it looks like I'm, I'm missing something because it should have worked in my opinion. Do you, um, do you like rerun the setup dot uh, bash from the uh -huh. devel? Every time you not, it should not because I already have set up dot bash as a bash RC. Uh -huh. uh, but basically what I'm here I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to remap uh, the topic. Oh uh, yes, now I remember why this has to be within the node. So I have to do something like this. Okay, I have to create node. So right now the node was self-closing. I need to have it as a child of this. Okay, so let me copy this and I have to do something like this to make it work because this topic is actually part of this node. Okay, so, okay. so now I hope that it should work. So control C. Then let's see. Yes, now it worked that you can see the two separate topics. So um, if you have like 10, 20 topics on a single node that then you use the global, then you will have to, uh, you will have to write 10 times for each of the group to remap it. But if you use uh, the relative uh, name spacing, uh, like just like you did it for sine wave, then it will actually save save your time in the long run if your intention is to use this um, node for uh, so many projects or for um, projects that require creating too many instances of the same node. So I hope uh, this mini tutorial on generating the ROS node from a Simulink model uh, made, made sense to you. If you have any questions, then definitely feel free to ask. And with this, I will stop sharing the I will stop recording. Um.